hello and welcome back to another episode of A Tanker's View with me, your average tanker, Tony. This week, keeping my promise, we are going to look into some of those Xenos hover vehicles. And as guessed by my absolutely lovely introduction, you got it right. This week is going to be the Eldar and their degenerate cousins, the Dark Eldar. You'll notice I didn't say Eldari or Drukari because I grew up walling around in 6th edition. And I'm also old and change scares me. The more you know, right? So, before I continue with this week's video, please do allow me the next 30 seconds to shamelessly e-bag. So please do like, share, and subscribe if you like my content. You can find me on all of the socials, your TikTok, your Quit Finders, your Grinders, your Farmers Only, your Instas, Facebooks, all of those. Just look for Tony the Tanker or a Tanker's View. And with that, guys, the Patreon and Ko-fi is also available. If you feel like you want to support this channel, please, by all means. And again, as always, thank you for watching. You're all legends and I love you for it. On with the video. The Eldar, like this video, are so fast and so stealthy that even the Great Khan and Corvax took notice. Lies. Oh, lies! These are the philosophical points that have not only governed their societies, but also how they fight wars. Everything they build is meant to maximize efficiency and economy of movement. Elegant, graceful, and very, very deadly. The first thing to note is they do not possess anything what we would call an actual tank. Being masters of anti-gravity systems, the Eldar do not actually employ anything that we would recognize as a ground vehicle, in fact, preferring to employ fast anti-grav systems more analogous to our attack helicopters, heavily armed, sleek, but ultimately just as vulnerable as their comparison counterpart. How dare you! The Eldar vehicles can be pretty much divided into two main categories. The Falcon Frame and the Engines of Vol. The former acting as a sleek universal transport system not unlike a floating chimera, and the latter being a heavy tank and titan hunter platform. Now the Falcon is pretty much the end-all be-all of the Eldar strike system. Sleek, angular, and with weapons affixed to where they will actually provide the best arcs of fire. The Falcon is a definite departure from 40k's typical approach to vehicles, that being all of the subtlety of being fist-fucked by Marnius Kalgar. <laughs> no, good times. The chassis is long, with a very nice steep angle of deflection, split into two separated wings with a gap for fixed forward-facing weapons. The primary difference between this and that pile of anime blue trash the hammerhead is that these weapons are the same elevation as the protective wings, not slung below them dragging your anti-personnel guns like an exposed scrote through broken glass. I'll fucking do it again. Okay, this has the advantage of keeping your precious guns out of the dirt and mud and protected laterally by the sweep and angle of the armor. It's kept aloft using anti-gravity and propelled forward by using air-breathing jet engines. This is kind of what really baffles me, because it seems kind of unnecessary overcomplication of it by putting jet turbines in it. If you can already master anti-gravity, why not use that technology to create an impulse or a caterpillar drive using oscillating gravity fields to propel the vehicle forward and backwards? Theoretically, you could be far more precise in manipulating the vehicle with the gravity to maneuver it. Either way, this bitch is fast. Unreasonably fast. 800 kilometers per hour fast. Now, is there anyone out there who wants to go fast? Anybody? I want to go fast! It's capable of short flights to swoop into the middle of enemy formations, using altitude and speed to rip through enemy formations, so... I don't know what the Eldar translations for <laughs> is, but there it is. And defensively, it's made of Wraith Bone, which has a limited self-repair capability on top of being an incredibly damage-resistant psychoactive crystalline polymer. It lacks the hollow feel of its larger cousins, but with its speed maneuverability, Imperial Gunners are going to have a hard enough time taking these things on. Now for my gripes about this. You know, for a critically endangered race, they seem pretty okay with giving enemy snipers and anti-armor teams a nice clean shot into your cockpit. Why glass or see-through transparent bubbles? That doesn't even follow the rule of cool. It's just unnecessarily nerfing yourself when realistically, you could armor over it and use some Eldar cameras and a hollow display. Hell, you could even use warp sight to pilot, probably. But between that and the intake grills being mounted so prominently, we all know why that's just asking for some plot armor trouble, 
but I guess GW can't make the Eldar as awesome as they should be because Emperor forbid G-dubs actually do something to advance the Eldar lore. No. I guess they've got to give those noble guardsmen a sporting chance as it were. Now, rounding this out is where I mentioned variants, and the Falcon has got a few. Starting with the Firestorm variant for anti-aircraft fire, the Fire Prism for fast attack tank hunting, mounted with a Prism Cannon, one of the coolest Eldar weapons. It's a long range, precision directed energy fuck you. Kinda like the Prism Tank from Red Alert 2, but cooler. And finally, the Night Spinner, which fires a monomolecular wire net to float down over enemy meta materiel, slicing through it as easy as, like, it's just slicing right through steel, flesh, bone, like nothing. Can you imagine the level of disrespect there? Getting an entire battalion sliced in neat little meat ribbons by what amounts to an alien fishing net? And finally for the Eldar are the Indians of Vol the Cobra, and the Scorpion. Both super heavy anti-armor systems. They share many attributes of the lighter Falcon, but are obviously larger and slower, only crawling along at a brisk couple hundred miles per hour. The layout is fairly similar with a split wing design, with either a turret or an inline fixed emplacement. And where it shines through though is the use of the hollow field, which makes locking onto the machine a nigh impossible task for targeting cogitators and guardsmen alike. Now, damned if I could find if this thing could fly like a smaller cousin, but given its light weight at 70 tons despite being classed as a super heavy, and the fact that it's got four engines instead of two, my headcanon says yes, but for probably much smaller stints, given that it only moves along at a couple hundred mile an hour. I'm fast as fuck, boy! <laughs> and just like jumping anti-tank obstacles mostly, and, you know, over formations and obstacles, Topping all of this off is either a large prism cannon, you know, much larger than the fire prism and all that entails, or the distortion cannon, which fires a Terran in space-time, allowing warp energy and warp entities to go full hentai on their enemies. Why are you the way that you are? Now, speaking of degenerate hentai heresy, the Dark Eldar are going to make a brief appearance in this video. Because the Dark Eldar almost got entirely cut from the rankings on this because the fact they really don't field any large-scale armies, just strike teams, and because that, they don't really field any large armored equipment outside of, well, a few hover trash repurposed pleasure yachts. Although, given their proclivities, the repurposed pleasure yachts probably still count as pleasure cruises. Yes, definitely! Now, all of them are open-topped, with all of the occupants exposed. Normally, I would say this is a big issue. But when you move as fast as these hell-bent for leather enthusiasts, it's really hard to get hit. Now, normally, and I use that term so loosely you could drive a glory on a class ship through it, you want to make sure that your weaponry destroys the enemy. Now, aside from dark lances on these things, which basically fire lasers made of dark matter and black holes or something, long story short, getting smacked by a dark lance is going to fuck your day up in the worst way possible. Jokes on you, I'm into that shit! Most of the weapons are, again, aimed at incapacitation or capture. So mostly due to the lack of variety in the Dark Eldar motor pool, I'm going to essentially gloss right over them. There's only so many s &M jokes I can make before Business Daddy YouTube hits me with the yellow hammer of sadness. Shut the fuck up! No one cares! So the G-dubs Wish.com Cenobites are going to get a thumbs up from me because despite the lack of heavy firepower, their stuff works well enough for the type of fighting they prefer. You know what? That's A-OK -okay by me. Yeah. So to round this out, my conclusions are that I really, really wish the Eldar got better treatment in the lore, and by that, I mean more lore. Low-key, the Eldar are one of my favorite factions because mostly they don't have the weight of numbers the other races have, save the Tau. To me, that adds more weight and grim dark than the Imperiums we lost 10 billion guardsmen, 6 planets, 4 fleets of ships, yet somehow we managed to win the war. And, well, the Eldar's fighting vehicles are just plain slick. They look cool, act cool, and blow up cool. Now aside from a few minor flaws, the Eldar are going to get four bone swords out of six tentacle wives. So again, hey, if you guys like the content, again, please like, share, subscribe. And with that, I will see you guys all on the next one. Have a good one.